Hello, in this video, I want to talk about header response codes. What are they and what do you need to know about them as you evaluate your website? To begin, every page on every website returns some kind of numerical code, and that numerical code indicates the page's status, and it communicates this to browsers and it communicates it to bots, and browsers and bots now understand what to do with that page based on the response code. This isn't something that human visitors are going to see, so this is truly how you communicate about a page's status technically. A normal page that's in good working order is going to return a status 200, and that indicates that everything is going exactly as we planned. It's okay. Pages that are not in perfect working order return a different code. They're going to return a 404 or a 410 or a 503 or a 501, some kind of numerical code that indicates an error has occurred and gives some information about what that error might be. These numbers, these numerical codes, are called HTTP response status codes. Here are the common status codes that you'll see come up the most often. We've talked about the 200, that means everything is okay and the page successfully loaded. We also have a 301 and a 302, which are different kinds of redirects. We then have a 403, which means forbidden. And typically you'll see a 403 around password protection. If somebody's not able to log in correctly, they're not able to authenticate themselves, then that page will come back with a 403 saying, well, you weren't able to authenticate yourselves, you're forbidden. We then have a 404, which is not found, a 410, which means the page is gone or has been removed. And then we have 500, which is an internal server error, and a 503 is a service unavailable. And there are lots of other response status codes out there. There's all different kinds of numbers that pages can return. So if you're getting a slightly different number on your website when you check the response status of a particular page, well, you can go and look that up on a more complete list. But these are the ones that you're going to see the most often. And ideally, you want to make sure that every page on your website returns a proper status response code that accurately reflects the nature of the page. If all of your pages are fine, then all of your pages should have a response status code of 200. If you've removed a whole lot of pages from your website, then the pages you've removed should have a status response code of 410 because that response status code is correctly indicating the status of those pages. If your server is offline, and it's offline temporarily down for maintenance, let's say, then it should correctly return the response status code of 503. But if your server is down for maintenance and it returns a response status code of 200 instead of a 503, that's where you're going to run into trouble because the actual status conflicts with the stated status of the page. How do we check the HTTP response status codes? There's a few different tools we can use. I really like Web Sniffer. It's very simple, very straightforward header check tool. With Web Sniffer, you put in your website's URL. If you just want to do a basic check, you can then hit submit. Web Sniffer, though, does give you some advanced features. One of those advanced features is the ability to change your user agent. A user agent is how you're accessing that website. What user are you? Are you a user in a Google Chrome browser? Are you Googlebot? Are you Bingbot? And with Web Sniffer, you can specify different kinds of user agents, everything from different versions of Internet Explorer to different versions of Firefox or Google Chrome to looking at it as if you're Googlebot. And it can be really helpful to load your website in different browsers, see if there's any different response status codes returned. In particular, though, it's really helpful to load your website as Googlebot to see if you come up differently for Googlebot. Maybe Googlebot is getting a 404 or a 503, a server error, on some page of your website that a normal user, just loading in a browser, would actually get a status 200. If so, that indicates a pretty big problem that you need to figure out why Google is getting a server error when they try to access your website. After you've submitted the web sniffer request, it's going to come back with the results. The first part of those results are just going to state the request header, basically what you specified in your test. In this case, we're looking at MatthewEdgar.net and we're going with their default user agent. But below this is the actual results that we want to look at, which is the HTTP response header. In this case, we had specified HTTP MatthewEdgar.net without the HTTPS, and I want to make sure that my HTTP version, my non-secure version of my website, redirects over to the secure version. And in this case, we can see that it does redirect over. We have a 301 moved permanently response status code that came back. We can then go through the response header and see that we specify the location 
of that redirect, in this case the location goes to https www.matthewedgar.net, and that HTTPS is the secure version of my website. That's what we want to see returned. We have the correct response status code in place. This is what it would look like if you got a status 200, meaning everything is okay and working as it's supposed to. Let's talk about some alternative methods you can use for checking status codes, especially if you want to check status codes in bulk. One method is you can use a tool called Screaming Frog. With Screaming Frog, you can crawl through your entire website and it will give you lots of information about everything contained on your website. Included with that information is all the response status codes for every page uncovered. Other crawl tools would do something similar. Another thing you may want to look at is following redirect chains. A redirect chain is where one page redirects to another, and then that page redirects to another, and then possibly to another, and so on, until you reach the final destination of that redirect chain. As a side note, if you don't have a final destination and every page just continues linking to another page that redirects, this is called a redirect circle or a redirect loop because eventually it will probably end up redirecting back to the place it started. And a good tool for evaluating redirect chains is a tool called Where Goes. Where Goes allows you to put in an origin URL, and then you can see all the different hops that that URL has to take to reach its final destination. Or you can see if it is a circular redirect because it ends up redirecting back to itself, causing a loop. Obviously that's bad because users and bots are going to be unable to follow or use that particular redirect. This is what the results look like when they come back from where it goes. In this example, you can see that elementive.com slash chain redirects to elementive.com chain1.html, which then redirects to chain2.html, which redirects to chain3.html, which then redirects to chain4.html, and then finally we redirect back to the main elementive.com website. That's a lot of redirects to go through. And as a side note, if you find something like this on your website where you have a chain that's three, four, five plus steps in that redirect chain, see if you can simplify it. In this example, we could hopefully simplify our redirect chain by going from elementive.com slash chain and have that redirect directly over to elementive.com. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it educational and informative. If you did, please subscribe for more videos like this from Elementive.